Many are familiar with the existence of ancient Hebrew language patterns, or Hebraisms, found within the Book of Mormon, which provide evidence that the book really is an ancient record. But even more strikingly is that many Hebraisms in the Book of Mormon are not obvious when read in English, or any modern language for that matter. Many Hebraisms appear only when you assume the Hebrew origins of the Book of Mormon, such as the puns Nephi makes based off of the name Joseph. The name Joseph means God will add, or God will add more, and it is based on the Hebrew root word yasef, which has many meanings, including to add to, to do again, do more, proceed, or to increase. After a close reading of 2 Nephi 25-30, one biblical scholar found a number of other examples in which Nephi seems to be using that same Hebrew root word, yasef. In these chapters, Nephi quotes Isaiah 29 to discuss the coming forth of the Book of Mormon through an unlearned man who he says will be named Joseph. Words potentially derived from Yasef are also used when Nephi deals with additional revelation generally, the coming forth of the Book of Mormon specifically, and the blessings that the restoration will bring. When you read these chapters, you'll notice Nephi talks a lot about revelation and the proper way to add more to revelation that's already been given. Nephi describes God's process of adding to the knowledge of those who receive revelation. For behold, thus saith the Lord God, I will give unto the children of men line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. For unto him that receiveth, I will give more. Nephi also condemns the attitude of those who reject adding more to the scriptures, saying, Many of the Gentiles shall say, A Bible, a Bible, we have got a Bible, and there cannot be any more Bible. Thou fool that shall say, A Bible, we have got a Bible, and we need no more Bible. Have ye obtained a Bible, save it were by the Jews? Know ye not that there are more nations than one? Wherefore murmur ye, because that ye shall receive more of my word? And because that I have spoken one word, ye need not suppose that I cannot speak another. Neither need ye suppose that I have not caused more to be written. Or as Nephi had written earlier in the book, I, Nephi, write more of the words of Isaiah. Wherefore by the words of three, God hath said, I will establish my word. Nevertheless, God sendeth more witnesses. You can see how many of these references could have originally been play on words of the name Joseph, which turns out to be a fitting name for the prophet which would bring forth the Book of Mormon. Nephi then uses yasep related words when talking about the effect that the Book of Mormon will have. And now I would prophesy somewhat more, for after the book of which I have spoken shall come forth and be written unto the Gentiles and sealed up again unto the Lord, there shall be many which shall believe the words which are written. Nephi then teaches about the doctrine of Christ, after which he tells the Nephites that they must wait until Christ appears to them in order to receive more. Behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and there will be no more doctrine given until after he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh. And now I, Nephi, cannot say more. The Spirit stoppeth mine utterance. Incidentally, the more doctrine the Nephites were given when Jesus appeared is understood to include the material on the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon has only been partially revealed as of today, but Nephi uses yasep related words when describing how the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon will also one day come to light. Wherefore, when thou hast read the words which I have commanded thee, and obtained the witnesses which I have promised unto thee, then shalt thou seal up the book again. Nevertheless, there is nothing which is sealed upon the earth, save it shall be loosed. Wherefore, all things shall at that day be revealed, and Satan shall have power over the hearts of the children of men no more. Nephi's wordplay on the name Joseph is one of many probable wordplays in the Book of Mormon which have been pointed out by scholars. While this instance cannot be proven conclusively, Book of Mormon wordplays with Hebrew and Egyptian words give evidence that the Book of Mormon authors must have known something of these languages, and they thus testify of the complexity, historicity, and divinity of the Book of Mormon. This one specific wordplay shows the importance to Book of Mormon prophets of both the ancient Joseph, the son of Israel, as well as the modern Joseph Smith. Mormon affirms that past generations of Nephites knew of this future seer and prayed for him individually, and other prophets addressed him directly. They were probably aware that their writings would only come to light through a future seer by this name, without whom their labor of writing would be meaningless. Thus, it would not be surprising if Nephi and others subtly referenced Joseph Smith through several Hebrew wordplays. The name also teaches readers about God's nature and how he works in eternal iterations, as he brings to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. As the Lord said to Nephi, My work is not yet finished, neither shall it be until the end of man, 
neither from that time henceforth and forever. And for this reason, when we serve as his instruments in furthering his ongoing work, we can each become a sort of Joseph and can have blessings added upon us. As one scholar said, the blessings in store for those who persistently receive what the Lord adds and obey it until the end of their lives can be summed up no better than the Lord does in the premortal council in heaven as recorded in the book of Abraham. They who keep their second estate shall have glory added upon their heads forever and ever.